Firstly, professional includes a scanner that can perform different types of scanning. One of these is spidering the application, what Bursuite calls crawling. This feature is only available in the professional version, the licensed version. To demo, we have a website set up on a nearby virtual machine that we're going to use for testing. Also, we have Firefox configured to run through Burp Suite. There's a couple different ways that we can activate the scan. One is, is we can browse to the application, and our application will show up under the target. We can add the application to scope. And once we've done that, we can right click and scan the application. You don't technically have to add it to scope first, but it's best practice to always add your application to scope before using any automated tools to make sure that Burp doesn't wander off into another application unintentionally. For scan type, we're going to choose crawl, which is the equivalent of spider in the original version of Burp. And we see that the URL is already populated. That if we want to crawl a subfolder, we either need to type that subfolder in here, or alternatively, we could have opened up the menu and right clicked on the folder to begin with and said scan, which would have populated it in the URLs to scan automatically. But as long as you want to start scanning from the root, you can just right click on the target. If you want to set detailed scope, you can set that down below. In the scan configuration, you can set up your crawling specifications, like how deep the scan is going to go, how long it'll wait in order to keep from overwhelming the site, and other features. If you accept the default, you don't actually need to set up a scan configuration at all. But if you make any customizations, you may want to save it to the library so that you can just select it from the library later. You can also set up your application login. This allows Burp to log into the app when it reaches the logon page so that it can spider pages that are behind the authentication. Typically, you can use the default resource pool, but it's important to note that this is where you would set the number of threads. So if you want to reduce the number of threads to lighten the load on the app, create a new resource pool, and then save it to the configuration so that you can use that again later. Another way that we can set up spidering is from the dashboard. Here we can select New Scan, Crawl, and in the same way as before, we have to pick the URL that we want to start with. In our case, we'll start from the Matilda directory. Again, if you're going to start the scan from the root of the application, this won't be a problem. Otherwise, everything is set up exactly as before. This time we'll hit OK and we'll let the crawl start. We can see the crawler is working its way through the request. We look at the target tab and expand this tree view. We'll notice that pages are added to the list as they're discovered. And eventually they turn from a gray font to a black font as the pages are actually visited by the spider. Eventually, we should see a list of pages, and we should see that all of the pages are visited. Or what you may see is you might see a link that starts out as gray and then ends up turning red because when the spider went to go visit the page, it turned out that the page wasn't there. 
when the crawler is done or close to done, you should see the activity in this area slow down or come to a stop. You can pause the crawler and restart it at any time. And when you're done with the crawler, you can change the settings on it, restart it, or simply delete it. It's important to crawl applications before using the other automated tools 